Welcome back to Luke and Ashley. Today, we're gonna make your mornings easier with some freezer meal breakfast prep. Let's get to it. Let's talk our menu. So today we're going to make a cheesy egg potato casserole with sausage, frozen yogurt breakfast bars, a roasted vegetable egg casserole, heart-shaped chocolate chip waffles, big cinnamon waffles, pumpkin pancake mix, and banana pancake mix. Let's get to it. As usual, I've got some of our cooking utensils out and some of our ingredients in order to make everything go a little bit quicker. I have our vegetables and potatoes over there. I washed them up and they're sitting out to dry. I have our sausage defrosting, which will go in one of the casseroles. And then I also have some broccoli and bananas defrosting as well. Let's get started. First things first, let's get on cutting these vegetables. What happened, Ashley? The apron is freshly washed and ready to go on, but we almost forgot it. I remembered it though. Okay, we got our veggies prepped. So in here we have bell pepper, onion, sweet potato, and then I'm gonna add broccoli as well. That was just finishing defrosting in the microwave because we used frozen broccoli. And then we also have our potatoes cut up. While we were at it, we cut up the other half of the onion and the other half of the bell pepper. And we like to put peppers and onions in our baked beans. And we always have our menu listed out for the week and this week we're having baked beans. So we figured we'd prep that now and have it in the fridge ready to go so that the night that we're having beans, it's already cut up and super easy for us to pull out of the fridge and prep. We also make sure to save all the scraps from the vegetables that we just cut so we can add it to our compost bin. Now that we have all of our vegetables for our roasted veggie egg casserole, I'm gonna go ahead and add some oil, some chili powder and some cinnamon and salt and pepper. And then I will mix them here in this bowl, lay them out flat on our baking sheet and get those started. While Ashley seasons up that vegetable mix, I'm gonna work on getting the sausage out and go ahead and cook it up. So Ashley defrosted three, However, we're only gonna use one for the breakfast casserole. But while you're already working, you might as well make your work worth it and go ahead and cook up three and save two for later. So Ashley just finished mixing up the vegetables and she's gonna go ahead and pop that in the oven. Make sure that when you put them on the baking tray, you have them evenly spread out so that they'll all cook nicely. Also a pro tip, if you don't already, please start using foil. It's amazing and saves you so much work from cleaning up the pans. Like we talked about in our last freezer meal video, whenever you're doing freezer meals, you wanna make sure that you can reuse dishes so that you're not wasting time having to go wash them and then bring them back. I just had the other vegetables in this bowl. I'm gonna wipe it out. It does have some seasonings that I don't want to go on our potatoes for our other casserole. So I'm just gonna wipe it out, put the potatoes in, and then use this to mix up the potatoes. For our potatoes, for that potato, egg, and sausage casserole, I have just added a little bit of oil and then I'm just gonna do salt and pepper. But today at Walmart, we found this new no salt, sodium free kind of salt. And so we're trying this out. It's actually made of potassium, which is supposed to be good for you. So I'm gonna put this on instead of actual salt. So potassium is supposed to like neutralize the extra sodium that you get in your diet because high sodium will lead to high blood pressure. So if you're neutralizing that extra sodium, then you should have lower blood pressure in theory. So we'll see if it works. Putting those potatoes into the oven and I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes and then we'll stir both of these and check on them. While we wait on those vegetables in the oven, let's get started on the granola for our breakfast bars. We are going to use quick oats, brown sugar, vanilla, cinnamon, and a little bit of salt and some oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up and then we will put it in the oven. Here's our granola mixture all mixed up and going on our baking sheet. I'm just trying to spread it out so that it'll toast up nicely. And this is supposed to be kind of like a honey oat granola. I don't really like big pieces of nuts in my granola, so I'm just kind of doing those quick oats. But instead of honey, we use brown sugar because it's a whole lot cheaper. And I have finished cooking up this ground sausage, so I'm gonna let this cool, drain it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bag it up. I just checked on those veggies in the oven because our 15 minute timer had gone off. So I stirred up the veggies, stirred up the potatoes, and I'm also gonna increase the oven temperature. I had it at 350, but now that we have the vegetables, the potatoes, and the granola in there, I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up to 400 so that everything has a proper amount of heat because it didn't seem like the veggies were really getting done the way that I wanted them to. Luke just finished up cooking that sausage and he's getting out the extra grease now, keeping us healthy. <laughs> now let's go ahead and make that waffle mix. So for this, I'm going to do two and a half cups of flour, three fourths cup white sugar, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one cup of milk, two eggs, 
one teaspoon of vanilla, and a half cup of melted butter. And we've never tried this recipe before. This is one I just looked up, so we'll see how it is. So a quick tip on making the granola, as you cook it, make sure you stir it. So this is the second time Ashley's stirring it. It just helps to keep that outside granola from not getting too crispy. I also made sure to stir up our vegetables, and it looks like they are finishing up now. That sweet potato is super soft, and that's what I was looking for. So we found an amazing deal on turkey today at the grocery store. They were 39 cents a pound. 39 cents a pound. So we decided, what the heck, why not get three? They've been defrosting all day, but they're really big turkeys, like 10 to 12 pounds. So I think they're still rock solid, but I want to take the cover off of one of them and see if I can kind of mess around with it and get some of the pieces broken off. We don't really want to cook it like a real turkey. We really just want to take the meat from it. So like the turkey legs and the breast and just like kind of like a chicken, all that stuff and kind of take it apart so we can use it for what we want. Update on the turkeys. These things are still frozen solid. So they're gonna to have to go in the fridge at least overnight. Ashley just reminded me that we're actually doing breakfast food today on the freezer mill. So just consider that a little bonus. I'll let you know how it goes. Back to the freezer meals. I've got our waffle mix and I'm mixing it up. Our granola is all set, our veggies are all set, and our potatoes probably have about five more minutes. So in total, that granola was in for about 20 minutes and the vegetables were in for about 25. And here are those finished products. Vegetable mix on the left with the egg casserole and the granola on the right. Remember, as you're cooking these things, make sure you come in and turn them and stir them so that all parts of them are getting cooked evenly. Okay, so I've just mixed the two waffle batters. This one is gonna be the chocolate chip one and this is the cinnamon one. So I put in the cinnamon and I went ahead and added it into our waffle maker. So the big ones are gonna be cinnamon and then we're gonna make small heart shaped that are gonna be the chocolate chip. Apparently I put in way too much batter. We have a little bit of seep on this side. I just lowered the oven to 350 because we are actually going to bake these egg casseroles so that I can cut them up into slices and then freeze them that way so I can just pull out a slice at a time. So I've got in here 14 eggs. It's going to be seven for each casserole. What I'm going to do is split the eggs between this baking dish and another baking dish and then throw in the vegetables for the one. For the other one, I'm going to throw in potatoes, sausage, and then top it with cheddar cheese. So I've got that first waffle done. It actually left a lot of residue, which this thing has never done before. So we're just gonna add a little quick fix to that. Add a little Pam spray, perfectly made for waffles. So the first one came out really well though. You can see four pieces right here. And a quick tip, if you don't know this already, make sure you dry things so that air can get through the bottom so the water doesn't sit and make the thing soggy. Here are our breakfast casseroles. This is our roasted vegetable casserole. And here is our potato, sausage, and cheese casserole. And I did have some extra vegetables, which I'm super excited about because I'll get to snack on those as we finish up cooking. While the waffles cook up, Luke is working on bagging some of that extra sausage, which will make mornings easier whenever we want to have sausage and eggs. All right, we just finished with those waffles. Ashley's doing some dishes. I just wanted to show you how pretty these waffles turned out. So there's actually 16 pieces here is how we'll freeze it. So you just kind of get out a piece or how much ever you want. If you want two in the morning, just grab it out of the freezer, pop it in the toaster, and boom, there's breakfast. We also got this sausage ready. So we have five sausages. So from teaching one year, Ashley got a gift and this was the gift. It's a cute little heart waffle maker. We're gonna turn all of this waffle mix into little heart waffles. All right, everybody. I just finished the first heart waffle and just like my heart for Ashley, it's just bursting and overflowing with love. Aww. Apparently I have not learned my lesson. The second heart bursting with love. Oh, no. All right, what is Ashley up to? I am working on the granola bars. So I've got our granola, I'm gonna add some butter and some peanut butter to it, put it in this baking tray. And I did have to take some of the granola out, so I kind of split it in half because I put it in this tray and it was gonna be way too thick for our granola bars. So I'm saving that just to have as a cereal or on top of yogurt separately. So I'm gonna put this in the oven once I get it all mixed up for about 10 minutes, then we'll let it cool. I'll throw it in the freezer for a second so it sets, and then we'll talk about that yogurt on top. So breakfast mania is coming along really well. The waffles are getting done. And I just pulled out these breakfast casseroles. They look beautiful. So this is our potato, cheese, and sausage one. And here is our roasted vegetable one. We're gonna let those cool. And then I'm actually gonna use the aluminum foil to pull them out like that. So it stays together nicely. Cut them up into those squares like we talked about, bag them and freeze them. I'm also prepping right now our mashed banana because we are going to make banana pancake batter and then we're gonna freeze them in ice trays and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, now we're gonna making pancakes. I'm gonna make banana pancakes. I'm gonna use one cup of flour, one fourth cup of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, one egg, one cup of milk, two tablespoons of oil, and two ripe bananas. And I'm going to make pumpkin pancakes. 
So our pancake base is going to be 3 fourths cup milk, 2 tablespoons of vinegar, which is going here now it's to create kind of like a buttermilk, a cup of flour, a fourth cup of sugar, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and a half teaspoon of salt, 1 egg, and 2 tablespoons of melted butter. To make it into pumpkin pancakes, I'm going to add some pumpkin and then I'm also going to add pumpkin pie spice, which is cinnamon and nutmeg. This is waffle number seven and Luke still hasn't learned how much batter goes into the waffle maker. Look at this. This is actually the biggest one yet. So the waffles are all done. We got seven hearts and we got 16 triangles. And the middle one, again, bursting with love. So our pancake batters are all mixed up. Like Luke said, he made those banana pancakes and I made pumpkin pancakes. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put our batter into these ice trays and then when they freeze, we'll push them out. And then however many pancakes we want that morning, we'll just take out that many squares from the freezer and be able to just cook them up. And I've actually seen in a video before that you can just take the frozen cube and put it straight into the pan. I don't know how well it works, but apparently you can do that. Or you can just pull them out and defrost them. Going back to pro tip number one, make sure you use foil. These both pulled out perfectly and there is nothing to clean on these dishes now. That makes cleaning up so much easier. All right, we've got a lot of things done. So here are our egg casseroles, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those up like we've talked about. And they came off really well, at least this one did. This one had a little bit of trouble. Now that I've transferred them, I'm gonna cut them, and then we can put them in the bags in order to freeze them. Here are our ice trays of pumpkin mix and banana mix. So these will freeze and then we'll pop them out and put those in a bag. This is our granola mix. So I added that butter and peanut butter, put it back in the oven. And now I'm gonna throw the Greek yogurt on top with some chocolate chips and we'll freeze it like that. Then we'll be able to use the aluminum foil to lift it out and be able to cut them into granola bars. Over here, we have some of that extra pancake mix, which we're actually just using now to make even more waffles. So we've got a pumpkin waffle going right now, and then we'll be able to make all of these into waffles so nothing goes to waste. I bet you can't tell who made which one. So I've just bagged up the chocolate chip heart-shaped waffles and the cinnamon waffles. And I finished up cutting the breakfast casserole, so this one's here and the other one is over there cooling. And here are our granola bars. So I've topped them with that great yogurt and then some mini chocolate chips. These are gonna freeze overnight and then like I said, I'll get to pull them out, cut them up and put them in a bag tomorrow. All right, we've got everything bagged. We have some things in the freezer, some things ready to go in the freezer. I also wanted to mention that the extra pumpkin that we had, I'm gonna put it in the freezer so we have it for other recipes later on. We're gonna go ahead and have freezer burritos for dinner. We'll catch you tomorrow to see how everything froze. Check out our other freezer meal video to see how we made these freezer burritos. These things kept really, really well. They're super good. Good morning, we're back in the kitchen. Here are our pumpkin pancakes and our banana pancakes. And here are our yogurt granola bars. So let's go ahead and get these all bagged up now that they're frozen. We're really struggling getting these pancakes out of their trays. So I think the solution for next time is to get the ones, the silicone ones, where you can like pop your finger all the way through them. These are hard plastic and you can't move them at all. So I think that's a lesson learned. Definitely, we're gonna have to let them sit for a second. Let's work on the granola bars instead. Well, I actually get those granola bars out. I want to show you the turkeys. So we have three big, big turkeys and they're all still frozen solid. But this morning we went ahead and took them out of their wrappers and we kind of have them sitting out. So maybe eventually later today, we can actually work on kind of carving them up, getting the legs off, getting the breasts off and the wings off. So we can cook that meat up and use it for meals. Ooh, here are our granola bars. So I've just pulled them out of the pan using the aluminum foil. And now I'm gonna cut them up into granola bar pieces. So this is it with the yogurt on top, the chocolate chips, and there's that granola that we made together. I got all mine out. I'm whooping Ashley. Still struggling. <laughs> They're so hard to get out. I think we're gonna break these little things. The struggle is real. Okay, we got those pancake mixes all bagged up. Here they are in their cubes. Here are the pumpkin ones. And then our granola bars did not cut up like I thought they would, but that's okay because they still taste really good. So I tried to get them into kind of more bite-sized pieces, but here they are. Maybe next time if you're going to try to make them add a bit more butter to the mix before throwing them in the oven or something sticky like honey or maple syrup, and maybe you'll have a bit better luck than I did. All right, let's wrap this thing up. So for a grand total, we have made seven chocolate chip waffles, five pumpkin waffles, 
16 cinnamon waffles, 8 banana waffles, 5 cooked sausage, 8 pieces of vegetable egg casserole, 8 pieces of potato sausage and egg casserole, 14 yogurt canola bars, 14 banana pancake mixes, and 14 pumpkin mixes. That's a lot of breakfast food. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed getting to cook with us. We thoroughly enjoyed it and we're ready to eat some breakfast food. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more. See you next time. Bye.